Welcome to VIP Ministries, Victory International Praise Ministry, and boy, do we have a word for you. I want you to stay tuned. We got a little information for you at the back end of the broadcast. God bless you. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, I now come to you to introduce my pastor, the pastor of Victory International Praise. If you all please would give your give a God a hand clap for the man Thomas Robinson. Can you grab your Bibles real quick? Go to Joshua chapter two. Joshua chapter two. Joshua chapter two. Praise God. Try not to be before you too long. Apostle Shawanda was trying to see what I was going to speak, but God just wouldn't release me. And all of a sudden, hey amen, on my way down here when I got ready to come, I felt that release in my spirit. I mean, sometimes you got to obey God. Amen. But I realized something. It just helped me to stay relaxed. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. There wasn't no pressure on me. And there's still no pressure on me now because of the anointing. Somebody yeah. say, because of the anointing. Amen. So Joshua chapter 2, I'm going to pray. So may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We pray that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. Somebody say, God, enlighten my eyes. Enlighten my eyes, oh God. Open up my spiritual comprehension. Amen. Tell God, I want to see. I want to see. Help me to see what you're saying in this hour, in this day, in this season, in this dispensation. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Praise God and amen. 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 Praise God. The Bible says, and Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, go and view the land. Even Jericho, praise God. You can stay, you can continue to play that soft music. Just drop it a little bit, but play it. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I kind of like to move with music. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and they went and they came into a harlot's house named Rahab. And the Bible says that they lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the land. Amen. Tell somebody I am a spiritual spy. I am a spiritual spy. Amen. How I many know that sometimes we're dealing with people, praise God, of the world, and they got walls up? And this is why it's, it's so important, praise God, that we tap into the spirit realm and find out what it is that God is saying. Come on, somebody. Oh, glory to God. Get a message from God. Get a word from God because we got some folks out there that got walls up. I mean, you know that Jericho was known for the walls. Amen, somebody. Praise God. But that's not the message. Amen. And the Bible says that they came to a harlot's house. Praise God. Now, uh, let me say this here. Uh, you need to understand, praise God, that when God, uh, the Bible is written in figures and types and and symbol is symbolic. Sometimes you're reading something and it's a symbol of something. And because I'm about to say something. I didn't know that every woman in the Bible is figurative or symbolic of the church. Amen. Okay, Amen. I'm gonna say it one more time. Right. Amen. For you, Amen. those of you that are looking at me like a cow looking at a new fence. Every woman in the Bible can represent a type of church. Yeah. Because I know what's on some of y'all minds. You say, well, uh, there are uh, some bad church. Uh, there are some bad women in the Bible where there are some bad churches also. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But she represents a type of church that's still in the world that don't know that they are the church. Come on, somebody. Yeah. That don't know that they're going to be saved. That's in bondage. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's running from God. Okay, all right. And the Bible says that they came uh, to lodge there. They came to lodge.
God's there. You know, one of the things that God showed me about um, uh, this woman is that uh, she was a risk taker. Okay, all right. Because here she is. Uh, she left her daddy's house. She left her covering. <laughs> She left her protection and her provision and went out and started a business. Okay. All, right. All, right. All right. How many know that God is a business person? And that God is business minded? Amen, somebody. Okay, all right. All right. God is business minded. Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. Jesus didn't come inside of uh, the church or a tabernacle, but he was born in a place of business. Okay, all right, all right. Jesus was the town's carpenter. Now, that's a good way of saying because I've run into so many people that try to uh, uh, make Christ be a poor man. Because sometimes we gotta uh, have something to relate to what we're in. Okay, all right, all right. And so they try to make him out to be a poor man, but the Bible says that he was the town's carpenter. That's like saying that he was the home people of the town. Come on, somebody. That he was the lows of the town. Because everybody that needed a table built, everybody that needed a door built, come on, everybody that needed, needed wood cut had to go and see Jesus. Come on, somebody. And so there was no way in the world that he was broke. I'm sorry for you folks that, you know, want to make him poor. You want to make him broke. <laughs> And so he was a businessman. Can I tell you something? I'm about to say something that's probably going to mess up a whole lot of you, the, a whole lot of your theology. But you have business on the inside of you. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, if you got God on the inside of you, you got business on the inside of you, and you are capable of business. Okay? Uh, maybe you didn't know it, but guess what? I'm here to tell you now. You got business on the inside of you. All right. <laughs> you might not uh, want to go into business, but you're still capable of business because you got the greatest businessman in the world on the inside of you. Some of you all, you look at the word, and, and when Christ was saying, uh, uh, my burdens are light and my yokes are easy. Come on. In other words, because he was building even oxen yokes. And I look at it as advertisement, okay? All right. Because who can make a better yoke? An oxen yoke than Jesus Christ. I know I'm messing some of you all up. Because you've looked at that scripture one way. All right. <laughs> okay. So here she is. She's a businesswoman. Praise God. Uh, maybe the wrong type of business, but she's still a businesswoman. Uh, she has streams of income. Not just one type of income, but streams of income. Because sometimes we're so one-dimensional. But the Bible says that she was a harlot, but yet the Bible made mention that they came to lodge there. Okay. In other words, uh, they came to sleep overnight. In other words, she would use her house or her residence as a place of lodging. And if they wanted entertainment, she would probably go a little further. Okay. But if we keep reading here, praise God, we'll find out, and let's go read, because I want to show you the streams of income. And I want to show you because she represents the church. She represents the people that are out in the world that has not come in yet. Okay, all right, all right. Verse 3 says, and, uh, uh, The king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they come to search out all the country. And the woman took the men and hid them and said, and said, Thus there came men unto me, but I wist not which they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went, I want not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Let, let me say this here. Look at the influence that a business person has. They didn't even bother to search the house. Okay, all right. They just took her word at it. So apparently, not only did she have influence with the king because she had influence,
know it's in high places. Okay, all right. That to, to the degree that the king trusted her, that nobody searched her house. Well, apparently, the men in the palace knew about her. Apparently, the soldiers would visit every once in a while. All right, all right, y'all gonna get this. Look at the influence that she had. Praise God. We were walking in our true calling. We, we were walking in what God called us to do because some of you all are standing around in the marketplace and I don't have time to go there. And you're looking for folks to hire you. Come on, somebody. When business is, is upon your life and God wants to use the wealth transfer. How many of you always hearing about this end time wealth transfer, right? I, I, I want to let you know that God wants to position us. Okay, God, I can't get ahead of I can't get ahead of myself. Okay, all right. All right, look at this. Look what happens. The Bible says she brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flat, which she laid, somebody say, in order, in order. upon the roof. I want you to say that again. Which she laid what? In order. Upon, because the, the flax were used to make material with. They were used to make clothing items and garments and, 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 and strands or a rope with. Okay, all right. All right. All right. Because so many times we've read this and we just thought that she was a prostitute only. Come on. Come on. Yeah. But but she but she, <laughs> she was more than a prostitute. She had streams of income. Yeah. This was another source of income. Yeah. All right. All right. And then she laid them in order. Because it's a shame, but sometimes the people of the world got more order in their life than what we do in the body of Christ. Amen. All right. All right. They, 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 they in more financial order sometimes than we are in the body of Christ. Okay. All right. Some of their homes are in more order than what our homes are in the body of Christ. Okay, all right. There was some order in her life. All right. How many know God can bless order? Yes. Okay, all right. All right. When Adam and Eve were in order, they had everything. When they got out of order, they lost everything. Okay, all right. I'm just teaching this tonight. Hallelujah. You know how you can it can be all in your mind. I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna preach this thing. This is a word from God. I'm teaching it tonight because I want you to get it. I want you to digest it. I want you to chew it up. Amen. Somebody that she was a businesswoman. That she has streams of income. That she represents. Come on. Because guess what? Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's let's go a little further. The Bible says that that they pursued after them. And the Bible says in verse eight, before they laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof and she said unto the men I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the terror of you has fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you you ever ran into somebody praise God that can tell your testimony better than you come on they found out that you were saved come on they found out that you were preaching the gospel and they, they came to you and they said man I, I heard that you preaching the gospel I heard that you're doing it. You ever read it to anybody like that? Come on, somebody. Here was a woman, come on, who represents the, uh, 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 who's an unsaved woman, but yes, she had been hearing about the things of God. Because apparently the strangers that were visiting her was talking about what it was that God was doing. And how many know that the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? And I got news for you. The world is getting ready to hear a sound. Come on. I got news for you. Those folks that are out there, oh, glory to God, that belong to the church, that are in the marketplace, come on, that's in the business arena, that got streams of income, they're getting ready to come in. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah, All, right. Yeah. All right. I don't need your help. I see it here by revelation. You ain't got, you ain't got to say amen. I see it by revelation. Oh, glory to God. I, I was preaching that God was getting ready to, uh, uh, God was getting ready to uh, level out the playing field. Okay. God. Should I go there? I'm not even going to go there. But some of you all mad at Donald Trump, but he's leveling out the playing field. 
And so what the Lord had me prophesying is coming to pass. Come on. Because he's telling China, you got to take our cattle. He's telling these other nations, you got to pay your bills. Come on, somebody. Because the wealth, because the, it seemed like the entire world was, was uh, living off of the back of the middle class here in the United States of America. Okay. And so the playing field is being leveled out. It might not sound right, but it's, it might not. It might be tight, but it's right. I, decide, I guess I have to show it to you some other day. Hallelujah. Uh, some other time. Oh, glory to God. But that man has an assignment. Amen. And so you just best to start praying for him. Get used to it. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. That's a whole other message. Y'all get back in the spirit. I hope I ain't made nobody mad. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. And so, because they're getting ready to hear a sound. They're getting ready to hear what it is that God is doing. Oh, glory to God. They're getting ready to change sides. They're getting ready to come on in. Come on, somebody. And, and because you need to understand that Rahab, okay, let me tell you a little bit about Rahab. Rahab, after she was delivered, after the walls was knocked down and her and her entire family was delivered because she also, they also represent a remnant that was taken out of the world. Okay. And she goes into the camp and there's this prince named Solomon. S-A-L-O-M. Solomon. He's a prince. And he marries Rahab. Okay. He marries this entrepreneur. All right. <laughs> and then this entrepreneur gives birth to Boaz. My God. Okay, I know I'm messing some of you all up. Yes. <laughs> because guess what? There's going to be some folks, there's going to be some Rahabs that's getting ready to come in. And they're going to help you to birth your business. Come on, somebody. They're going to help you to birth your Boaz. You looking for Boaz, but God want to birth the Boaz through you. Because Boaz turned out to be a mighty businessman. Okay. All right. All right. All right. If you ain't getting this, you'll get it later. Watch the show and meditate on the word. waiting on your Rahab. So that you can birth your boys. Yeah. Right. Was, that, was that good or what? That was a good prophet. My God. Somebody say, My God. My God. Because God want to put you in business. When you look in the word, it's, it's amazing, praise God, that, that at some of the darkest times in people's lives, God put them in business. This, this, this woman of God whose husband had died, it was, it was like saying that, that uh, uh, I've lost my provision. I've lost my resources. Come on. I've lost my job. And she went to the prophet and said, the creditors are coming to take my sons. Okay. So Y'all look at his sons. But she was saying he, he's he's coming to take what I have given birth to. Because some of you all, you have birthed some houses. Okay, all right. Maybe I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the folks on the television. Some of you all, you have birthed some, some cars. You work hard. There's sweat equity involved. And you you birthed some stuff. And, and all of a sudden, you find yourself in a tight spot. And the creditor is coming to get your stuff. She was in a dark place. Because sometimes you in a dark place. But when you're in your dark place, that's when God want to do something miraculous. The man of God said, what do you have in your house? She said, I ain't got nothing but a pot of oil. Some of you got a pot of oil on the inside of you. Some of you got an anointing up on the inside of you. Come on. And this dark place, this pressure is to push you into your business. To 
wake you up and cause you to realize that you are an entrepreneur. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got business on the inside of you. suits and and uh, because I was just getting started in the ministry and I wasn't willing to pay the cost and so I found myself running back and forth trying to catch it on sale trying to catch it on clearance on the clearance rack and in the end in the end I paid more for the suit just as much as I would have paid if I would have bought it off the rack why because I found myself having to go to the tailor and and having it uh, 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 measured and and cut and and just shape and fit me because when I usually when something hits the clearance rack it's you know you got to go with what's on the clearance rack and sometimes your size is not on the clearance rack and so I paid more in the end it cost me just as much and that's the way sin is the Bible says that the wages of sin is death the Bible says that sin has its pleasure but only for a season. I want to challenge you to pay the cost today and to give your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Repeat after me, dear Jesus, come into my life, be my Lord, 
be my savior. I am a sinner and I need a savior. And I invite you into my life today. I'm going to pray and believe God that he's going to send you to a church that's going to help you to grow and to uh, empower you and mobilize you to impact society. My name is Pastor Thomas Robinson of Victory International Praise. You'll find our information at the bottom of the screen, how you can get in touch with us. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Work for me. I put something on the inside of me. That's a pot of oil. I'm just waiting for you to start pouring it. I'm just waiting for you to start releasing it. Come on. I want to bless the works of your hands. Come on, let's raise our hands to the Lord. Father, we thank you for an anointing that you're releasing upon your people even now for business. You say, well, you know, I, I've never, I don't know, if, even if you got a job, you're still capable of doing some type of business on the side. Because when God do this wealth transfer, he wants you to be in place so that the world can give into your bosom good measure. Press down shaking together and running over. Men are going to give into your bosom. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree it. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm Pastor Thomas Robinson of Victory International. Praise God bless you. Welcome back. I sure hope that you have enjoyed this broadcast and hope that it's been a blessing to you. We want to ask you to partner with us in the ministry and help us to take this gospel to the four corners of the earth. You'll see at the bottom of the screen, VIP Ministries at ATT.net. VIP Ministries at ATT.net. And even as you give, I pray in the name of Jesus that the heavens are open and you walk under an open heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.